Ethical Perspectives on the News is produced by the Interreligious Council of Lynn County, which is solely responsible for its content. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KCRG TV9. Hi, welcome to Ethical Perspectives. I'm Beth Parker. Um, you know, it takes a village to produce ethical perspectives. The Interreligious Council, KCRG, the committee, panelists, and you, our audience. I mentioned that to encourage you to reach out to us with feedback. Um, and also, uh, let us know how we're doing and what ideas you might have for future uh, Ethical Perspectives um, episodes. It's always a work in progress. This episode was originally about religion. It's become apparent, however, that religious controversy has been and is responsible for some of the most inhumane behavior in recorded history. So the, con uh, the conversation e evolves. So um, I am gonna ask our distinguished panelists to introduce themselves, tell us a little about who they are and a little about their organization and we'll, we'll talk from there. Mandy, so go ahead and start. Hello, thank you very much for having me as a guest on the show. My name is Mandisa Thomas, and I am the founder and president of Black Nonbelievers Incorporated, which is headquartered in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Our mission is to provide community and support for Blacks and allies who openly identify or who identify as atheist, agnostic, humanist, uh, and also uh, other non-religious um, identities in this very heavily religious climate. Um, and we also advocate for state church separation, reproductive justice, and also lives based on evidence, um, evidence uh, solutions and evidence-based practices. Kirby, go ahead. Oh, well, thank us. you. Thank you also for having me. My name is Stephen Kirby. Uh, people call me Kirby. I'm the founder of the Unchurched Church here in the Midwest. Uh, we are a unique church. Our mission is to be essentially a community advocate for truth, healing. Um, we do this through the sacrament of ayahuasca, which is um, now a, uh, a buzzword in, 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 in many communities now. And uh, our goal is to help train and provide more safe spaces for people of all income, race, age demographics to have access to these sacraments and these opportunities to heal. Thank you. So let's start with uh, some of the conversation pieces that I shared with you earlier. Why is traditional religion or credo a platform for controversy? Um, I, I'll start there. <laughs> so as we look at religious history, uh, we can certainly see the rise and fall of uh, many religious empires or, or, or cultural empires. And We've seen the um, the rise of the Judeo-Christian religions, Christianity and Islam in particular, and how they have had an influence uh, on you know on on the world, and how they have how other countries and cultures have had to accept them, and it hasn't always been for the better. Uh, we can look to a lot of you know, a lot of these historical instances like the Inquisition and the Crusades and see how violent they actually were and how people were subjected to such beliefs um, at the hands of other conquering uh, nations, mo mostly European nations. And um, it's, it's unfortunate to see how we have seen how this has played out over the years how the difference in these beliefs, and there are many, um, have really been allowed to inform many uh, perspectives as well as govern and also hinder the rights of many human beings. And it's based on, again, not necessarily fact but uh, or, or evidence-based, but it's simply on what people believe, what people, and, and based on information that wasn't available, was or was not available at the time. And uh, we've seen this uh, throughout the course of centuries kind of wreak havoc. Um, now that doesn't mean that religion has been all harmful or belief, all belief has been harmful. But as we see um, certain beliefs be imposed in public policy, 
and it infringes on the rights of, of many, uh, we have to have a dialogue and discussion about how this has been problematic over the years and how it has hurt us as human beings. Yeah, if I could add to that, I um, again, I'd like to even take a step back and say, what is religion, especially in this country? So when it comes to what our church is trying to do and how we're trying to participate in the community, right, we have to fight for a case that what we believe is a religion. OK, so the fact that you could take um, any of the religions that were just mentioned and those are just taken and, 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 and no debate about that, that is an acceptable religion and anything else isn't. There's flaws in that. And especially she was mentioned as being mentioned is these religions at, at their base are based in a in a, you know in this this system of non-duality of this Christ consciousness or depending on the religion this this, this state of, of of perfection or um, enlightenment whatever term feels good for you source consciousness and it's been corrupted by men and doing the work that we do it's very obvious is corrupted by men very simple examples if you could examine your own self ego and we could see ego any type of God or um, ruling force that needs to be worshiped, you can stop there. You know there's a problem with that system, right? And again, I wanna give grace to some folks that are trapped into that. I was trapped into that. Some of my very close friends are trapped into that. And I consider myself a fairly intelligent human being and one that isn't easily fooled, but it wasn't until I was able to step outside of that system that I could see the power of um, again, through the culture, through our, 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 our just the, the way that we're raised, our programming to see this in, in unique ways and past our, 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 our common sense sometimes. Like we can look at evidence that we're like, no, and we can dismiss it because it's so important for us to maintain that. And that's a conversation I think we we're having before we got on air is the question to me is why is it so important? right why is this why is this so important and to me one of the big pieces is obviously community so if you step outside of this this is what we believe this is the structure and if you think for one second hmm maybe i don't agree with that there's this potential loss of community and i think in in many cultures and many communities this could be devastating respond Mendisa, or have that conversation i mean it's well I, I sense a common theme in what you are saying what you are both saying but I'd absolutely like and i think the common theme here is humanity right the uh, humanity how we see the world how we may want better for the world our communities our children our families but the religious indoctrination and societal indoctrination has um you know, has had a huge impact on this. And, and we've seen this uh, throughout, again, throughout history, how um, people's beliefs have been used to justify some very, very, um, some very, very awful um, things, uh, uh, actions committed uh, against other people. And I mean, it is up to us to try and fix that and if our beliefs or or our perspectives compel us to be better human beings then that's great however uh again when we when we look at the various beliefs and and even lack of understanding of them and people's willingness to defend those indoctrinated beliefs uh in in the, despite the fact that there is no tangible evidence uh, to prove the existence of of the deities that are believed in uh they they are very very divisive uh and it makes it difficult at times to really have uh not just dialogue but sometimes it also prohibits um it, it prohibits the well-being of of people who were indoctrinated and it has caused trauma for a lot of people um, once again, and we have to, we, we do have to talk about this. You know, we have to talk about, um, what it means to have, you know, been imposed, have these fundamental beliefs imposed on us, how they have been a problem in our society, how they are still a problem because they are infringing on the human rights of, of many. Um, and so ultimately, um, those of us who really care about humanity uh, should be looking, 
at least pass those beliefs, even if we don't agree with them, but also encouraging people to critically think about them. If they have, you know, if they, whether they were, um, you know, whether we were, whether that was instilled in us when we were younger or we came into it as adults um, to critically examine and uh, reconsider anything that doesn't have a valid basis and evidence or verification and hopefully use those principles, not just to, to, to continue learning because learning is a continuous process. Uh, continuing to do better for our communities and the world is continuous, especially as times change. You know, we are in an age of information. We are in an age of technology and things are moving faster than, than we, than, than we realize. And it's going to be important for us to make sure that no matter how we were raised, that we continue to keep our minds open. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky in the sense that, I mean, religion is called the opiate for the masses for a reason. It's, it's providing something on, on these levels that are providing peace, contentment to people that are just getting through this existence. Right. Um, but again, the, 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 the attachments that we have to it and that we've, that have been created, these man created attachments and almost prisons of, again, if you step outside of this, um, you're out of this community. And we know that social research or all the research says that the benefit is more the social contact than the religion itself. So again, this lack of community or this concern of losing community is a big piece of why folks stay in this. But also, again, coming from a religious background and serving a lot of folks with religious trauma. So I'm glad that you brought that up is I, I don't want to underscore the empower of, of the power of this in the sense that there's many folks that I've served uh, served sacraments to that their their thought on religion, their faith, it is the complete foundation for their existence. It is everything to them, and it's that deeply ingrained. And no amount of logic, or thinking, or even I I, I would jokingly say sometimes to a person that I'm very close with, I'm like, you could have been in a a, a waterboarded for ten years, and you would probably be more of a Christian more of a Christian until that reality is, 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 is altered or they could see that there's an alternate reality. And I think that's what we try to do at our church is again, I think from my standpoint, God source consciousness, whatever words feel right for you. Um, there's, there's something that we are one with. There's something greater than all of us that we can connect to. But again, it is not the God of the Bibles or any of these religious texts, because these have been man written and man constructs, and therefore they are corrupted. And we see that corruption again. If you've laid out all the evidence for it, look what it's done throughout history, right? Look what it's done throughout history, the experience that I personally had. And that's the other concern I have, or what I try to lead folks to is let's not listen to what Matthew, Mark, Luke, John said. You don't know them. You can't Google search them. You don't see their Facebook page, but we're taking everything they say to be so deeply. What have you experienced personally? What is your personal experience? And for me, that's all I move forward with is my own personal experience, because that's the only truth. But again, finding folks and having some compassion for this religious trauma and realizing that sometimes logic and good arguments aren't going aren't going to be enough to deconstruct that um, because it is so deeply ingrained. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mandisa. Oh, no, I was going to say that as a community organizer and the leader of my organization, we certainly focus on empathy and compassion. Those are not those are not inherent to religion. Those are not inherent to belief in God. Um, mm -hmm. As as human beings, we all are are passionate. I think what the difference is what motivates us, you know, what what it is that, you know, many atheists and non-believers want to do good for the world because it is the right thing to do, because there is no afterlife. Um, there has not been a proven afterlife. So uh, we want to do better for the world as it is now and for our future and for future generations, because we know that um, we want to leave this world in a better place than, than we left it or than it was for us. And so there is no divine reward in that. It is that it is the, because we, we have this, we live on this world and we, we, we live in this world and we know that it's best to do it, it's best to do what's good for us now <laughs> and, and to and now and for the future. 
And um, it actually is more rewarding because that means that there is accountability. I think what tends to happen in many with many religious people and, and many people in general is that there's often kindness done for the sake of, you know, reciprocity or for something, you know, to, to get something out of it. And what, what many of us get out of it is knowing that, um, again, that not just our families and our communities are better, but also ourselves, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with wanting a better life for ourselves. And, but that doesn't mean simply to be selfish. It means also that, um, you know, that, that we, that we, for those who may not have as much as we do, we, we definitely want to do better for them. And again, that isn't inherent to religious communities or, or belief in itself. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree and uh, agree entirely. I um, I think this is fun, though, because now I get to play and I don't get to usually do this. So I'm actually going to be the defender of of God. But as you've stated um, several times here, there, there's there's no evidence. Right. I could only share what I've experienced so I could play the role of somebody that does think that there is potentially more. Right. And um, but no experience. And that's and I think that's the beauty of this conversation and, and, and the beauty of of of, of where we try to come at it. I think that's excellent. I, our acceptance of it is again, it's, it's based on everybody's unique experience. So I honor your unique experience in it. Right. And with that, you could have whatever reality that feels right for you with that. And in exchange, I could have mine. And I think that we know that through evolution, we only see a small fraction of reality scientifically. That's a fact, but most of us have been spoon fed what to think about life, existence, God, our entire lives and then we either revolt against that or incorporate that uh or or in any level in between that but yet most people again had very little experience with god directly and if you have not had that experience it'd be a very difficult thing i think to to, 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 to relate to and step into but again i just encourage folks in general um to be open to experiences um going both direction if your experience is one that you do think that god is is an existence or that this is true and this is real be open to the fact that maybe you're wrong and if you don't feel that i also would recommend maybe being open to the thought maybe that there is but again my why i want to say that is because i do a lot of the folks that we work with again are coming with this religion trauma and i don't want to throw it all out um if there is a piece of that 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 resonates with them um, it doesn't have to resonate with me. I want, again, each person to have their own individual experience. And if God is still a piece that resonates with them, I want them to be able to maintain that and and and, and not completely wipe that. But I guess the point of that is um, how we see reality, again, is so um, based on our programming. Um, and this one, again, is such a deep programming that you write on so many levels to unwind it. Uh, is difficult, but I do like the fact how you uh, created this separation between being a good human and religion, right? They're, they're, they're not on this. So it's hard to know, a lot to talk about here. Um, I'm going to take a little different track here. When while, con uh, while conducting research for this episode, I discovered complexities regarding belief systems. For example, the Quaker believers whose mechanism of engagement is silence. What do you consider to be your organization's mechanism of engagement? How do you, you know, when you have to push back against people, or what, what pulls everything together? What keeps you united in within your organization? Hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd say for us, it's an openness of, um, as an organization, it's always this quest for more information, for knowledge, for understanding, right? So with that comes this openness to truth and 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 open opinions, altered opinions, um, and also just this this openness that we are meeting each other on levels that have nothing to do with a lot of this physical plane. Most of the folks that I'm interacting with on a day to day, I don't know what they do for work. I don't know their income. I don't care. I don't care about that as a person. I'm interested in who people are as a person, individually and energetically. What are they bring into this world and this table? Um, so to me, I guess that would just be our, our, our message of, of, of just acceptance. That's interesting to me, Kirby, because I perhaps know you a little better, but 
um, through your the very strong signal community that you have. People mm. gravitate toward that and are very interactive. If you want to say a little about that, and then Mandy said, go ahead. Well, yeah, again, it's interesting because through, again, I, I mentioned what we do in, in ayahuasca. And if anybody's done any research on ayahuasca DMTs, it's a psychedelic. But again, we know that this sacrament is being used to have major impacts on PTSD, trauma. It's a healing modality. Um, and again, we've had to create signal groups because of the legality of this. We've set up a legal church. Um, we are a, an organized religion, so we have some flexibility there. But there's lots of organizations around the country that don't have that freedom. Um, but we still try to keep private because we have members that understand if they mention that this is what they did or that they were getting this healing or they had this belief structure that they would be ostracized, thrown out of their communities, um, removed from groups, um, concerns about work, etc. So again, it goes back to this freedom of religion. What is a religion? Christianity, uh, Islam, Buddhism, those are the only religions that we can have in this country now. Anything outside of that, although, again, a, a good portion of those have a pretty violent history. We don't have a violent history. Why can't I be a religion? So we have to keep somewhat of what we do private for people's um, personal protection, which I think is, again, um, unfair. But that's where we're at in this country with organized religion and what is a religion and the corruption of that. So, Beth, can you repeat the question so I know that, that I'll, I'm answering it? Um, I'm asking what unifies your organization, but. Um... Oh, sure. OK. Um, yeah, so what really the basis of Black nonbelievers really is about, um, it really is about community. It really is about deconstructing, um, it is it, deconstructing beliefs that may have been damaging in any way or, um, and, and helping people find communities where they feel like they've lost it. And there is a certain, there's a level of confidentiality to that as well, because mm -hmm. there are a number of people in our, our organization who cannot be out with their, with their atheist and non-religious identities, and also who have trouble um, expressing them to family members and friends. And, and it really is, we really are based on um, being able to take information, parse it, and understand what could be helpful to us and what isn't. And also about trying to build better communities and helping people become their better selves through again, evidence-based and tangible practices. Um, we encourage people that if they are, you know, if they are sick, they, or if they are suffering from mental health um, trauma and, and religious trauma to seek a clinical, um, to seek clinical help um, don't just try to handle it on yourself. Uh, we definitely try to um, encourage more action-based, um, you know, uh, action-based principles, whether a as a group, and we also are social in nature. Uh, we, um, we are about rebuilding for a lot of people, whether it is on an individual basis or, e or on a communal basis, which, and, and that is very, very important as well as advocacy. Um, what unifies us is the fact that we are dealing with a, we're, we're seeing, um, especially in the United States, a lot of Christian nationalism. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of things that are impacting our communities and it's important for us to speak up so we definitely are about that self-encouragement, uh, community building and rebuilding oneself and in that identity and also um, deconstructing shame, letting go of shame and stigma, which is a lot, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot to do, mm -hmm. but it's important that as human beings, um, whether it is on an individual or a collective or communal basis, that, that we do these things. That was a beautiful answer, and I and I and I wish I could have had you answer for me, especially the last portion of it, because I think that's where we have some some similarities, right? Is is meeting folks with these preconceived or programmed views on whatever it may be, and just trying to provide an alternative 
option for them and then surround that alternative option with community and acceptance right because um, again as you perfectly stated in a lot of instances these folks are stepping away from a very important community they're uh, these are folks that they rely on that they lean on and to lose that is a scary thing so they need an alternative community and so i think that's beautiful that again i, I think we have a similar mission in that way is helping deconstruct some of these negative programs and then offer an alternative a safe space for folks to rebuild. So Excellent. we're kind of running out of time, but I want to ask you a question, Mandisa, but I'm just going to pose the question and then I'm going to go in a different direction <laughs> because Kirby mentioned source, something bigger. Does that exist in your belief system or your, in your organization? Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to answer that because okay. I just want to know. Well, <laughs> I mean, I really want to know, but on the other hand, um, I we're, we're winding, winding down here and um. I'm wondering what you think you might have learned from each other or take a, a minute or 30 seconds to explain how you act as a resource or how people can get in touch with you and learn more about, let's go that way. And then we'll. Yes. Well, I certainly, I appreciate you coming on Kirby because I learned that, you know, there are alternative ways that certain religious groups help, you know, help your members, um, heal and, and cope, um, even if there are some aspects that I personally don't agree with or wouldn't do, the fact that you are helping people is very, very important. And I think that that is something that we can learn from each other. Uh, I think that, you know, unfortunately, many religious denominations uh, leave a bad taste in, people, taste in people's mouths because it's either you just accept it and that's it. You don't question it. But when you have, um, you know, when, when you have groups and organizations that do encourage the education and learning process, that's always good. And um, do I think there's something bigger than us? There always is, but not from a divine perspective. Mm. Interesting. Kirby? Oh, I, I, I wish we had more time because I think um, some of the information that you were sharing with me prior to us getting on the show, I think would be extremely vital for people again especially as we're talking about um you know religion from a, a race standpoint too and then specific communities and religion as it pertains to specific communities and the impacts on that that's that could be ours um so i appreciate you bringing that up and, and sharing that perspective and again i i love again to for, from my standpoint your answer is perfectly great it's it's that's the beauty of this is the acceptance that we all could experience this the way that we want to experience it. And um, the fact that, again, you were offering folks just a safe space to determine their own future. That's it to me. Whether they come my route or they go any other route is irrelevant to me. I just would like folks to have an opportunity to have that deprogramming, uh, deprogramming happen and have them make a conscious decision about what they think and believe. And until they can see that there's some level of programming there, right, and that there's some level of de deprogramming necessary, it's going to be a problem. So the fact that your organization is helping with that, I think, is beautiful. Thank you. 15 seconds. What do you want our audience to take away from it? 15 seconds for each of you. Uh, learn more about my organization at blacknonbelievers.org. And we have an upcoming conference, Women of Color Beyond Belief. You can learn more at our website. Uh, we're the unchurchchurch.com. Again, an alternative to your traditional church. Uh, we're at the unchurchchurch.com. Two of my very favorite people because of all I've learned from you both. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on uh, Ethical Perspectives. Thank, Thank you. you.